I'm standing here in the cell in the Tower of London where uh, St. Thomas More was kept. So many thoughts going through my mind and heart at this moment, just to be in this place. First of all, how cold it is. These are like just the little quarters he had. Imagine going through winters here. We would have looked out those windows at the river. Conflicts arose with Henry VIII with the act of supremacy when the, when the king claimed supremacy over the church. Moore didn't rush into opposition. Moore served the Lord wittily during those years, finding a way through the English law to maintain his integrity. Oftentimes, the culture will be congruent with our Christian convictions. When it's not, we can again, with prudence, try to make our way. It's only when it becomes a matter of, of either or, one or the other, that we then have to take a stand. Amos Moore is a beautiful example of how a lawyer, how a statesman, a politician, a writer, a man of the world could bring the gospel into that setting. We see a beautiful model of how to be as innocent as doves and as clever as serpents. So many things that strike me about Thomas More. What came to mind now is, uh, again, to reference A Man for All Seasons, that scene toward the beginning, or is with Cardinal Woolsey when he's upbraiding more. It says, you could have made a statesman if you didn't look at everything with that moral squint. And Moore's famous response in the play is, well, Your Grace, I believe that when statesmen forsake their private conscience for the sake of their public duties, they lead their country by a short route to chaos. That line has always haunted me. We have a lot of that going around in our politics today. Politicians who are all too willing to forsake their private conscience. The conscience, as Cardinal Newman said, you know, is the aboriginal vicar of Christ in the soul. The conscience is the voice of God within us. We would say, and it's not just a pious sentiment that our country is under God. It's extremely important. When we forget that, then law and politics become self-involved and self-justifying. Keep in mind now his famous last words before he was beheaded. I die his majesty's good servant, but God's first. That's the key to Thomas More, and it makes him still a very powerful guide to all lawyers and politicians today.